water. And it was outdoor wedding outside a museum in Ontario. And, um, well, we didn't bring umbrellas, but some people did. And the sky was all overcast, and the rain started to come. That was half an hour before the wedding. And it started to rain. All the umbrellas went up. And so I and three students, two other students, said, OK, let's meditate for, uh, for um, better weather. Within a minute, an opening in the clouds came, and the sun just shone right down in this area only, not all over, just shone right down this area. By the summer of 1991, Israel had had no rain for two years. The water in the country's only freshwater lake, Lake Kinneret, had fallen 15 centimeters below the critical level. Then, 10,000 Israelis gathered at the Wailing Wall to pray for rain. On the third day, rain came down on the country in torrents. Many people explain this fact as a simple coincidence. Belief in coincidence is neither scientific nor religious. From a scientific standpoint, there is scientific determinism. Well, from a religious standpoint, there are things that are done which have an influence on the outcome. Coincidence is a way in which people try to escape bearing any responsibility. Just as the cry of a bird in the mountains can cause a powerful avalanche, or the motion of a butterfly's wing can change the weather over an entire continent, likewise, people can launch global processes solely by the power of their thought. And that is no exaggeration. Not a single scientist who is familiar with systems theory doubts that. It is entirely a question of waiting for a moment when the system is in a state of instability. In a phase of instability, the motion of thought alone is sufficient for the system to start to change. I do not always see it. When my own mistake or sin comes back to me in another guise, although essentially it is a single unit, whatever it is that I did wrong returns to me, not as punishment, but as a result. With all the abundance of water on the planet, less than 1% of it is available fresh water. This supply has been practically unchanged in the course of human history, while the population has been constantly growing. The world has never seen as many people as there are on the planet today, 6.5 billion. There would have been enough fresh water for everybody if it were not for the severe attack of the human civilization. Look, imagine, if there will simply not be any water, that it will go away deep underground. Who shall give you water which will spout freely from the ground and be easy for you to reach? Today, more than a billion people of the earth lack access to safe drinking water. Over five million people, half of them children, die from this reason each year. This is ten times more than perish from wars each year. If this problem is left unsolved, water may become a source of international conflict in the 21st century. Already now, it is gradually attaining the status of a base resource which is beginning to figure in the political dialogue among countries and peoples. See, we talk a lot about an upcoming oil crisis because we will run out of oil. But I think it is even more important that we worry about the water that we don't run into a water crisis. According to UN data, around 10 million tons of oil annually pours into the world's oceans. 
countries with sea access dump industrial, construction, and radioactive waste into the ocean. As it is dumped and descends through a column of water, some of the polluting substances dissolve and change not only the quality of the water, but also its memory. The ocean is also still capable of erasing these memories because of its salinity. But nonetheless, the dilution effect is there. It also needs to be discussed and studied. Because at very great levels of dilution, sometimes a memory begins to have even a stronger influence than at slight, so to speak, levels of dilution with high concentrations. We have to pay attention to this. This is a very difficult period of our planetary existence. Today, we've already plowed up all the lands possible, and we've lost 33% of our green covering and half the plankton in the ocean. So the problem might seem to be far off, but there is water everywhere. In the past year, the temperature of the cold, deep sea waters under the Gulf Stream fell by one degree. In the past nine years, the rate of melting of Greenland's icebergs has tripled. In the past 30 years, the destructive force of hurricanes has doubled. The number of natural disasters is rising. In the decade from 1973 through 1982, 1,500 disasters occurred worldwide. In 1983 to 1992, there were 3,500. In 1993 to 2002, there were 6,000. 226,000 people died or disappeared during the December 2004 tsunami in Southeast Asia, while half a million were left homeless. The October 2005 flood in Europe left 200,000 people homeless. Over 1,300 people died during Hurricane Katrina in August 2005. One million people were left homeless. Almost four million people have died in natural disasters during the past 30 years, while 4.5 billion people were affected.